This laptop here has a failing hard disk. Yes, when you boot into Windows, it actually tells you that the hard disk is imminently going to fail. I've never actually seen this happen in person. So what exactly is it gonna take for this thing to finally fail once and for all? Let's put it through its paces and find out. This rather boring looking business laptop is the Toshiba Tecra A10, released around 15 years ago, and being a pretty sturdy, dependable laptop for the previous owner, until recently when it started mentioning imminent hard disk failure. Was this due to heavy use? It's really hard to say, since this laptop isn't all that dirty. And I can't say I've ever seen this sticker on a laptop before. Perhaps it's refurbished? And before we delve in further, let's give it a quick clean. I've been in possession of this device for a number of years, and I got it from a local e-waste recycling centre, and I'd be guessing the hard disk failure warnings were enough for the owner to simply ditch the whole thing. I personally find this era of laptops nostalgic, as some of my first decent computers had very similar specifications. Now, just how slow is this supposed failing hard disk? It's running Windows 7, not Windows Vista that it would have originally come with, and just over 1 minute 40 later, it's loaded up. Windows has detected a hard disk problem. Back up your files immediately to prevent information loss. It may fail the next day or it may keep working for a long time, but the thing is, if you've got sensitive data on there, it's best to get it off as soon as possible and not use the drive any more than you have to. Interestingly, given the capacity and manufacture date, this isn't the laptop's original hard drive. The one that's in here is 640 gigabytes being made in 2011. It doesn't appear to show any physical signs of damage and listening closely reveals that it sounds like this during operation. Very similar to a radiation Geiger counter actually, although this thing is not radioactive, I'm pretty sure. And while this drive still has some functionality, let's see if we can improve the sluggishness. And if you don't want to completely do a fresh installation of your operating system, deleting unused files and programs is a really good place to start. I personally find Wise Disk Cleaner is good for this purpose. It found a whopping 124 gigabytes of junk files to remove. Next, I'd recommend defragmenting the drive, which can also improve performance. And just how fast is this 13 year old hard disk? Yeah, it isn't a fast drive to say the least. And as slow as this is, those speeds are actually what you'd expect from this model. And what do you know? The startup time has now dramatically reduced by about 40 seconds. And the warning for the failing hard disk didn't appear this time. But a few minutes later, it did rear its head once again, predicting that the drive will fail. But what exactly will it take for the drive to fail once and for all? Mechanical hard disks are very easily damaged by shock and drops as they have many moving parts. If Auntie Donna has taught me anything, it's that everything is a drum and has using this hard drive as a drum caused it to fail? Surprisingly, it is still functional and will load into Windows. So let's ramp it up a notch, shall we? I've never realized just how slippery a hard drive can be. Some small drops feel like the next thing I should do. And if you value your drives and the data on them, don't do this obviously. And once again, let's see if it still fires up. We are getting the little drive indicator light and well, yeah, it's back and running once again. But so far, all of the impact tests have been done while the drive was not spinning and reading or writing data. But oh boy, now the drive is making a very distinct clicking noise. It sounds like the drive may actually be toast now, and between me moving the camera, the system blue screened and will no longer boot to the drive. So let's open up the drive and see if there are any visible signs of damage. If you really need files from a drive that's clicking and no longer working, you'd best send it off to a data recovery specialist. Opening the drive yourself will almost certainly make things worse or completely ruin any chances of success. Mechanical hard disks are not designed to be opened and it clearly has a hidden screw. That screw is usually located under the label, right where the drive read and write head is mounted. We now get our first look inside the non-functional drive. The round platters make for a perfect mirror, which also stores all of your data. They're made from a number of non-magnetic materials and coated with a magnetic layer that actually stores the bits. Any fingerprints or debris like dust or dirt can ruin the hard disk platters. And this is what it looks like during operation. Well, kind of. The platter in this drive spins at 5400 RPM, and as you can see, the read and write head just bangs itself against the edge, which is actually what causes the clicking sound. 
And if you're very lucky, your hard drive failure might not actually be caused by the read and write heads or the spinning platter itself. Perhaps it could just be the circuit board that's usually found on the back. This can easily be replaced, so you might actually be able to recover your data if it's a board failure. And I'm going to guess that the sheet behind the circuit board shields the rest of the drive from unwanted electrical interference. With mechanical hard drives, once they become damaged, you basically have to throw them away. There really is no repairability factor, and any damage could be so minute that even after you inspect it, you're not even going to be able to tell what the damage is. So essentially, once these drives become damaged, they are basically e-waste and ready to be disposed of. And if you don't want someone else finding your data, it's probably best to smash the drive with a hammer. And the amount of intricacy and precision in mechanical hard drives hasn't actually changed that much in the last 30 years. And it's easy to see why these drives are often mounted in shockproof casings to prevent damage. And also why it's made very clear on the various labels and warranty void stickers that you should never open these up. And taking a look around this drive, I guess the little piece is designed to absorb moisture perhaps. And one of the main ways to make hard disks faster was to simply spin the platter at higher speeds with some server-grade drives running up to 15,000 revolutions per minute. Some cheap laptops even came with drives that span slower than this one, which still does the same clicking noise as it did before I disassembled it. I didn't expect that it was going to magically start working, but what will freezing do to the hard disk? I was going to do this prior to it failing as one of the tests. So what will a few hours at minus 18 Celsius do to it? I would expect uh, the sudden change in temperature to cause moisture to build up on the surface. And as you can see, the moisture on the drive platters is quickly swept away by the drive head, and I'm pretty sure that the fast spinning motion of the platter is also driving that moisture and water away. But as you can see, the water is literally being flung off all over the place. Eventually, it would cause damage and corrosion, especially if it had nowhere to dissipate and wasn't open like I'm showing you here. Well over a year ago, I bought this crucial MX500 250GB solid state drive for only 29 Australian dollars. It's probably one of the best value for money 2.5 inch SATA SSDs around. And let's take it apart to see exactly how simple a modern solid state drive is. The SSD is smaller, lighter, faster, and in theory more reliable. And once 2.5 inch size drives became obsolete, computer manufacturers didn't have to dedicate so much internal volume to the internal storage itself. Speaking of how cheap drives are now, I bought these drives directly from China. Do any of you remember Intel Optane? They were small solid state drives to in theory boost system performance. They don't make much sense to use today, but maybe they would make for a good video topic in the future. The Optane drives were designed to be paired with slower storage, acting like a cache for frequently used programs and files as as far as I know, but solid state drives and flash memory are just so cheap now that there's really no need for such a thing. All of your computer storage can now be done from a small, fast, and energy efficient solid state drive. Thank you very much for watching. That was definitely a bit of fun. I had never seen that happen before, and it's something that may happen to you one day, although SSDs are I think far more reliable and robust than old mechanical spinning hard disks. Either way, thank you very much for watching and supporting my channel. If you want to see more videos, you know where to look, and I'll have some more very soon. Well, as soon as I can get them to you. I can't wait to deliver more videos to your sub box. Have a good one, and I'll see you in the next one.